The AMC 10 and 12 can feel like an extremely challenging math contest. But once you learn the most important techniques, it suddenly feels a lot more approachable. This video series has it all, from Vienna's formulas, to telescoping, to expected value, and cyclic quadrilaterals, along with many other important concepts. In the first video of the series, we'll start with combinatorics and cover the fundamentals, permutations, and word rearrangements. Let me become small again so we can start. So first off, we have factorials. n factorial is just n times n minus 1 all the way to 1. And the number of ways to arrange n objects in a line is n factorial. And n objects in a circle is n minus 1 factorial. And if the problem says that reflections are not considered the same, then it's going to be n minus 1 factorial divided by 2. Next, we have the permutations formula. The number of ways to arrange k objects out of n in order is just n factorial over n minus k factorial. By the way, if you're interested in more of these basic formulas and fundamentals, you can check out the AMC8 videos linked in the description. Now let's start off with an example. Peter is packing his pencil case for the AMC12. He must pack three distinct pencils, two distinct erasers, and two distinct markers in some order. However, he will not put an item in his case if there are already more of that type of item than any other type of item. For example, he won't put another pencil in his case if there are already more pencils than markers or pencils and erasers. Okay, so how many different orders are there for Peter to put the items in his case? So how can we approach this? Well, let's see, let, let's take this item by item. So for the first item, how many choices do we have? Well, it can be a pencil, an eraser, or a marker. So we just have three choices, right? Now, for the second choice, for the second item, how many choices do we have? Well, let, let's just say that the first item we chose is a pencil. Can we have another pencil? Well, our condition says that he will not put an item in his case if there are already more of that type of item than any other type of item. And in this case, we have more pencils, one of them, than markers or erasers, since they're both zero of each of the items so far. So we can't put another pencil because of this condition. So we have to put a marker or an eraser. Two choices times two. Let's just say this one, we chose a marker. Now for the third one, how many choices do we have? Well, just like earlier, if you put a pencil or a marker, that won't work. Because if you put another marker, let's say, then now there, there are already more markers than erasers. There's one marker, zero erasers. So we can't put another marker and something similar for the pencils. So this one has to be an eraser to even out the count. So times one choice. We only have one choice. Just has to be the remaining third item. Not necessarily an eraser, just whatever item is left. Now, now that we're on the fourth option, now how many choices do we have? Well, now, luckily, all of them, there's equal number of pencils, erasers, and markers. So we can put any item because there are not more pencils and markers or erasers and pencils, for example. So we, again, have three choices. And let's just say we, we chose a marker this time. It doesn't really matter what you choose, but just to see an example of how it works. And now, just like earlier, we cannot have another marker because in this, now there's two markers and only one eraser and one pencil. So we cannot put another marker. So it has to be a pencil or eraser times two. Maybe it's an eraser. And then the third, the sixth choice has only one way, has to be what other item was not in here. Pencil, let's say, in this case. So we can think of kind of dividing into these groups of three, pencil, marker, eraser, pencil, marker, eraser. And now look here, we have three distinct pencils, two erasers, and two distinct markers. So we have an extra pencil. So let's just put the, we have to put the pencil at the end. We only have one choice for that, right? 
Now, is this our answer? Or is there anything we're missing? Well, it's always a good idea to read the problem carefully. It says three distinct pen mark pencils, two distinct erasers, and two distinct markers. So that means, for example, these three pencils are not the same. And same thing for these two markers. They're not the same. And also, the erasers, these two erasers are not the same. So, how can we account for this? We, we can just multiply by three factorial for the pencils because there's three pencils and there's three factorial ways to arrange the pencils, like we saw earlier. Now, what about for the markers? There's two markers, so there's just going to be two factorial or just two ways to arrange the markers, and also two factorial for the erasers. Now, all we have to do is multiply this out, and we'll be very close to solving the problem. 36, because 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, and 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. And then 3 factorial is 6, so times 6. And then 2 factorial is 2, and 2 factorial is 2. So times 2 times 2, which is just 36 times 24. Now, this is a quick mental math trick you can use here. 36 is 30 plus 6, 24 is 30 minus 6. So this is just 30 minus 6 times 30 plus 6, which by difference of squares is 30 squared minus 6 squared. And you can evaluate that to be 900 minus 36, which is 864. Always want to keep a use of these mental math tricks. It save you a little bit of time. Okay, now let's move on to word rearrangements. The number of ways to order a word to just n factorial, where n is the number of letters, divided by the number of duplicates of each of the letters factorial. Again, if you're interested in more of these basic formulas, you can check out the links in the description where I cover many more examples using them. And an important use is that this is not only true for words. The number of ways of arranging many ob any objects or anything else is also the same. And you can there's some pretty clever applications you can find using this formula, like we're just about to see right here. In a shooting match, Eight clay targets are arranged in two hanging columns of three targets each and one column of two targets, as you can see in the diagram. A marksman is to break all the targets according to the following rules. First, the marksman chooses a column for, from which the target will be broken. And then the marksman must break the lowest remaining target in the chosen column. So, for example, if he chooses the second column, he'll eliminate this target. And if the rules are followed, we're asked to find how many different orders can the eight targets be broken in. And it's not just eight factorial, because we, have, we cannot shoot any target we like. We cannot just shoot this target right now, because it's not the bottommost target. So just to get an idea of what's going on, let's just take an example. And to make our referring a little bit simpler, let's call this column A, call this column B, and column C. Okay, so let's say the marksman chooses column A first, and then he shoots down this target right here. Then maybe he chooses column C next, and shoots down this target. Then maybe he chooses C again, and chooses it, shoots down that target, because it's now the new bottommost target. And then maybe he chooses B this time. And then maybe A again. And then maybe A again. So now that all three A targets are shot down, we can't, have, we can't shoot another target in the A column, so no more A's. So maybe then instead he shoots down the C column, and then the last one has to be in the B column. So does this look familiar? A, C, C, B, A, A, C, B. That looks a lot like a word rearrangement to me, even though it's not a word in the dictionary. So is there any way we can maybe convert this problem to a word rearrangement problem, as crazy as that sounds? Maybe we can. Well, in, actually, indeed, that's true. The number of arrangements of this word right here is just the answer to the problem. Now, the reason this is true is because in each of the columns, you can think about that there's three targets in, row, in column A, two in B, and three in C. So just like we did in word rearrangements where we divided by three factorial for duplicate letters, we also have to divide by three factorial here. Why? Because 
there's a given arrangement that you must shoot down the targets A in. And same thing for B. There's a given arrangement, you have to shoot them in. You cannot shoot this top one before this bottom one because that would violate our condition. So we're essentially dividing by two factorial here. And same thing for C. So this is, so this is very similar to word rearrangements where we divide by three factorial for A's, two factorial for B's, and three factorial for C's. So how many ways are there for this? Eight factorial divided by three factorial divided by three factorial divided by two factorial. And this is just eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two. And we're not gonna write the one, obviously. Six times six times two, cancel the sixes. And then six cancels with three and four and leaves a two. And then these twos cancel. And we're just left with eight times five times seven times two, which is just 560. And that is the answer to this problem. Okay, next off, we have a problem from the USAMO. I'm just kidding, it's from the AMC 10. So in this question, using the letters AMO, S, and U, we can form five letter words. And if these words are arranged in alphabetical order, then what position does USAMO appear in? How can we do this? So let's find the number of words before USAMO in alphabetical order. Right? So let's let's look at this position by position. We have five letters. Now, what if the first letter is A, let's say? Because A, all letters, all words that start with A will be before USAMO in alphabetical order. Because A is before U. So how many permutations start with A? Well, there are four letters left, M, O, S, and U. So there's just going to be four factorial ways. Similarly, if there's an M here, M is also before U in alphabetical order. There'll be four factorial ways because four factorial ways to arrange these four letters. And the same thing for S. S is also four factorial. And O as well. So in total, there's going to be four times four factorial equal to 96. 96 about 96 words before you sum in alphabetical order that start with something other than U because U is last in alphabetical order from these five letters. Okay, so now there's 96 words before you sum in alphabetical order that start with a different letter. Now, what about the second letter? Now, for the words that start with U, there's different possibilities for the second letter that are before you sum. For example, there could be UA something, something, something. And this will have how many ways? Well, S, M, and O have to be rearranged, so three factorial. And something similar with U and not A this time, but maybe M or O and O as well. They all have three factorial ways. So there's an additional three times three factorial equal to 18. So there's 18 additional permutations that start with U, but has a second letter that's before S in alphabetical order. Now, now, now they have, we have the US, U and S. What about A? Well, there's nothing before A in alphabetical order. So just A, zero. We add zero or nothing. Next, we have M and O left. And M is before O in alphabetical order. So again, there's no values that start with a different fourth letter. And same thing, and at the end, we just put an O at the end. So what is our answer? Is it just nine, 96 plus 18? Be careful. This is the number of words before you saw in alphabetical order. So you saw will occupy one more than this because it's the position it occupies. And this is just equal to 115. And that is the answer. Okay, next we're gonna talk about combinations. So combinations is where order doesn't matter. But if you want to learn about combinations, you're going to have to check out the next video. You can click on it right here.